It all started when my mom met my dad. They fell in love and then they had me. Hi, I'm Molly and my life is kind of a show. I come to you a wounded lamb in need of support and spiritual guidance from my spiritual girlies, okay? I don't know what God thinks he's doing with my life right now, but he thinks he's being awfully funny and I don't. Welcome <laughs> home. If you haven't seen the, you know, the moving content, check it out. We had, it's been crazy. Shocking. Where to begin? It all started when my mom met my dad. So 2022, to put it bluntly, has not been my damn year, okay? It has been really freaking rough. Like my therapist has been concerned for me, okay? It's rough and I have like, I've kept it together, you know? I hold it together, it's been fine, but like by a, by a hair, you know? And if there's anything I'm good at doing, it's having a mental breakdown and then coping with humor. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> I'm inviting you into the chaos that is my reality. And this is just like, to be clear, a snippet. Just a, just a wee taste of what has been going on. Cause this is just in the past 10 days. The amount of things that I have gone through in 2022, some I have shared, many I have not yet, but don't worry, we'll get there one day. Um, it's been, it's been enough, okay? And I'm trying to communicate that with whatever this, the big guy is upstairs, whatever the big girl is up there, the guy, the non-binary pal, whoever it is up there, whatever spirit guides us all here on this planet, I'm trying to communicate that I've got the message. Though frankly, I don't know what the message is, which is why I'm here for guidance to any of my spiritual people out there. Tell me, what is this universal energy trying to communicate? Because I want it to stop. And I don't think it's going to until I understand the message. You've got mail. So in the past 10 days, I have had three, count them one, two, three, near death experiences. And I thought it'd be fun to come on and share my trauma with you. Just to lighten the mood, you know? 10 days ago, I was in Portland. We saw it, we saw the vlogs. Fun time, fun time had by all. Yeah, until the near death experience happened. And I'd like to be clear that that is like not dramatic. This is like very real and there will be live footage. Don't worry, I've got my, I've got my receipts as they say. So us blind girlies decide what a brilliant idea would it be to go on a hike. Now I would like to remind everybody of something that I clearly completely forgot. Hiking might seem like just like a fun casual thing because people do it so often. And it's just like a fun Saturday thing. No, people die hiking. People need to get rescued hiking all the time. It is a dangerous activity. You are in the depths of nature and nature has no plans, okay? She just does whatever she wants. Mother nature, she, she wants to set fire, she sets fire. She wants to drop a boulder, she drops a boulder. She wants to landslide, hurricane, she does it. So we're hiking and halfway, not even halfway, like a little before halfway through the hike, it begins to rain. Now there is seven of us on this hike, Lucy Edwards and her fiance, Ollie, he is guiding her. Gina Harper and her daughter, Serena, she is guiding her mom. Serena's boyfriend and me and my mom. Jordan is guiding me and my mom is helping everybody capture footage for TikToks and Instagrams and whatever, YouTube, you saw it in the vlog, because all of us do social media. So she was helping be very kind and like capture all the footage from everyone. We're nearing the, we're, we're, okay. So we're like not even halfway through the hike and it's like a pretty decently long hike. How long would you say we were hiking for? Oh, three, three hours? hours? Yeah, three hours. Three yeah, hours. I'd say three hours. We're probably an hour to an hour and a half into this hike when it began to rain. It was just sprinkles at first, but then the skies, the Portland skies opened up and they rained terror down upon us. Okay, it was very rainy. And this hike, whilst beautiful, also treacherous because a lot of the pathways were very skinny and had large drop-offs. And that is dangerous at the best of times for anybody, let alone in the slippery rain with three blind women. So we're, you know, doing our damnedest to stay safe. Keep in mind, my mom has Crocs on. We stand. <laughs> I actually have Crocs on right now. And uh, I have Vans on because I lost we... my Crocs. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I don't know They're neon green. I know. Anyways, so couldn't pack our hiking boots because we were just stopping in Portland for literally two nights. 
one full day on our way to the move to LA. And so we had a lot of luggage for the move. So we just couldn't fit anything else in for Portland and hiking boots are big. So I didn't realize like it was gonna be this treacherous a hike or I would have made the room. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I digress. I'm not inappropriate shoes. So it's slippery. And like you're going up these skinny, like there's parts that you're going up a steep part and going down and it's rocky and there's roots, but it's very skinny and it's slippery because now it's muddy. So it's like pretty risky, okay? But we're doing well. We've got our ish together. We're strong, confident, blind women out in the world living our best lives. No bother. Until we are like getting to the end, like we're nearing the end. I'd say we are like 20 to 25 minutes max away from the parking lot where our car is. So we have, we have done the damn thing. We are wet, we are soaked, I would actually say, and we are exercised. We have burned the calories, we have gotten in our steps for the day, we've closed the rings, we've done well. But there is one final bridge to go over. Now there's a couple of these like wooden bridges. I think, I wanna say we went over like two or three, maybe. This is the final one before the like last leg to the parking lot. And I would say it's like 15 feet long. Like it wasn't a super big bridge. It was, it was just a quick jaunt over the wood bridge. Yeah, maybe 20. Maybe 20 feet, it's yeah. not long. 20 to 30. No, that's exaggerated. It is not 30 <laughs> feet long. It was like 20 feet long. It is wide enough to go two by two. So that worked perfectly. Serena and Gina are in the front. Then there's Ollie and Lucy. Then there's me and Jordan. And then there's my mom at the back. Gina and Serena are quite far ahead. Lucy and Ollie are pretty close ahead of us. And then Jordan, me and my mom are all like right together. So Gina and Serena are well off the bridge. Lucy and Ollie are off the bridge. Jordan and I are right at the end of the bridge. And below this bridge is a big drop, obviously. Like huge drop. Huge, like. It's a cliff. It's a cliff, big drop. Hence why there needed to be a bridge. And so Jordan and I are on the end of the bridge. Like we are about to step off. I wanna say we had like two to three more clip cloppers and we'd be off. And then my mom was right behind us. So we're all like nearing the end of the bridge. That's when we hear a massive crack, very loud and jarring. And we all kind of screamed, like we all startled, you know? That's when I hear my mom kind of be like, oh God. And she, I can tell, I don't know if you can see me back here, but she's now, she's gone down like that. She's on the ground, okay? I can hear her because I can hear her scream is from below and I can't see. And this, like this video I did a few years ago about that very fun stampede I was in. When I am in these situations, it reminds me of how vulnerable I am as a blind woman because I cannot just run. I can't just drop everything and go. I am like stuck and hoping that somebody else is able and willing to keep me safe and help me and support me in these moments but I also feel an, an incredibly large amount of fear and I would say more fear than the average person in this situation who can look and see what is wrong. Because when you can look and see what's going on, you know, okay, this is the level of danger we're in. This is how close I am to the danger, X, Y, Z. As a blind person, I can't see what the danger is. I can't see how close the danger is and therefore I can't figure out how to get away from the danger. And, if, and even if I could figure out how to get away from the danger, I need help doing that. And so it just feels unbelievably scary and vulnerable in these moments. And I would say like the fear level for you when you're blind going through things like this is just so much higher than even what a sighted person would experience in an emergency. And I know anybody with a disability can, can probably relate in some way or another, especially if your disability is physical and impedes your mobility. Um, because being mobile during emergencies is uh, generally pretty important and that's very scary. And so I'm kind of just like screaming out of sheer like panic because I don't know what's going on, but all I know is something has happened to my mom. And my mom's my damn person, we know this, like we're besties, okay? So I'm like, what's happened to my mom? <sighs> that's when we, all collectively realize and rush off the very end of the bridge that we were on that an approximately 500 pound boulder, so a massive rock, came tumbling 
off of the cliff, smashed onto the bridge we were all just on, and splintered some of the bridge away down to its depths. The bridge now did not have railings. This is where I'm gonna insert some B-roll footage. All I know is the railings were broken and perhaps part of the bridge. I don't know because I can't, I've never seen the footage, I didn't see the bridge. But uh, from what I can recall being described to me by the people I was with, the two, and my mom wasn't the one who got that footage. Jordan went back and got the footage and actually took a piece of the bridge with him. Here's a photo of that. Yeah, he took that piece of the bridge, just for memories. Oh, video, whatever, yeah. photo or video. Here's a piece of the bridge that we took or that he took. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. All I know is parts of the wood bridge were destroyed by the boulder. And my mom, the reason she like ducked and went down is because she was hit in the lower back by one of the pieces of the bridge. One of the pieces of the wood flying. went flying and hit her. And again, we're hearing cracking, booming sounds feeling a shake and like hearing things and then she gets hit so she doesn't know what's happening right so it's she just like went, a rocket hit me but it was actually the wood i mean it, it whacked it was it was really hit hard i'm going at such a fast velocity i'm not surprised that it would like really hurt so needless to say once we realized what had happened we were even almost more scared now because not only are we realizing that if things were changed by like a split second my mom could have been crushed by that boulder or you guys or any jordan and i or we could have had the bridge completely collapse like there are so many things that could have slightly changed if the boulder had hit the bridge in a, in a slightly different spot the whole bridge could have collapsed and again jordan my mom and i were all still on the end of the bridge so although we were close to getting off we were still on it and if it had say crashed the middle of the bridge and fully broken it we would have gone down and done be done Dead. or if Finished. the rock had slightly turned where or changed where it hit my mom could have been crushed by it and like it's insane to think that and so now we're all almost like in more panic because we realize like how dangerous the situation it is it's pouring rain everything's muddy we have very thin paths for walking on three of us are blind and now we know that mother nature ain't happy and she's showing us and so yes that boulder um for all we knew could have been one of many right like that could have just been the beginning of a landslide or who knows what right enlighten us anybody who knows about emergency earth life you know planetary situations naturey things is it an avalanche or an earthquake or a, a landslide landslide i'd say a landslide of rocks yeah so we weren't sure if it was going to become a landslide or what was going on so needless to say we wanted to get out of there pronto but again speed isn't my best friend so we got out of there as quick as we could um some people were hiking towards us and they heard the screams and they're like what went what just happened and we told them and they're like well is it safe to keep hiking and we were like i mean we wouldn't do it but like up to you and they're like okay and they kept going and i was like i don't know if you're brave or stupid i can't decide but uh better you than me all i wanted to do was get out of there yeah we were all just like we just want to get in the car and uh so that was number one and that was just last friday and today is sunday so this is all within a 10 day period um keep in mind this is also whilst finishing my renovation moving to my la apartment and dealing with a guide dog being sick and unable to work and being still at this moment in time that I'm filming this, unsure as to what the outcome is. So I'm dealing with a lot, needless to say, and uh, <laughs> there's more to come. There's more to come. Um, on Thursday, I did get a call about Ben and um, it wasn't a super positive update and I was obviously upset and I just wanted to get out of the house, stop, organizing and sorting and packing and I just wanted to get out of the house and like distract myself and not think about it. So we decided, my mom and I, to go for a walk to one of my absolute fave spots, which is Sugarfish. Get the trust me, trust me, okay? You want the trust me. It's the best. Oh my God, so good. So we're walking to Sugarfish and 
the sh there's a lot of sugar fish around LA, so obviously I'm not gonna tell you which one I went to or what intersections I was at, because that gives away where I am. But we were, like, it's like a 25, 30 minute walk, would you say 25, 20? It was 25 yeah. to 30. Yeah, like 25 to 30 minute walk, so. Good exercise. Um, like a quick Uber, but a long walk. And we were so hungry. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon, and all we've eaten is breakfast at like 8 a.m., and it was like a bowl of yogurt with fruit and nuts. So we were hungry and very hot because I did not bring appropriate clothing because 99% of my clothing is still in storage. So I literally, after that day, went and bought this dress from Maritzia because I needed something lightweight and appropriate for the very hot June weather here. And so I wasn't in appropriate attire. I mean, like, I didn't look silly. I was wearing like a white outfit, but it was pants and sneakers and like I was hot, okay? So I'm hot, I'm hungry, I'm emotional, I'm tired, I'm not feeling great. And I'm, you know, with Kane. Where is she? Where is my friend Kane? So I'm with friend Kane, who I'm saying friend loosely. I don't like her very much, okay, to be clear. Um, I'd much rather friend Ben, but we are with friend Kane. And it is a brand new Kane. I got a fresh, clean cane. I thought that would make me feel better about having to use a cane unexpectedly again. Um, if I had like a nice new shiny toy that didn't have all the dings in it. And so I'm using my brand new fancy cane. I have successfully gotten zero dings in it thus far. I think you lost your cane. I lost my cane. Okay. I want to be very clear that in this incident, I had the right of way. But even if I didn't, this person was being negligent as a driver. Oh, I got hit by a car. That's the story I'm leading into. Heads up. Speak of the devil. You know, as you do. I'm rolling along. Ooh, there's an object there, watch out. And we're at an intersection. I'm standing this way. There is, you know, a busy street parallel to me and the perpendicular traffic so what I'm facing is a quieter side street. Um, it was not a lighted intersection. So this intersection, my perpendicular traffic, like always had the go. And then um, the perpendicular traffic, so what, was, what I was crossing was a stop sign. I approached the cross before he in his car drove up. And basically I, my mom is with me too, so she can attest that I did have the right of way. I, oh, yeah. I did not step out of line. Nope. And so we stepped down to cross because once again, we got there first and there was traffic on that street. He was on the quiet side street with a stop sign. He wanted to turn right, which would mean if we're standing here, he'd be turning right in front of us and around. And so we go to step out. We do step out. He starts to pull up. We're obviously assuming because we are in the intersection. We have stepped out with Kate out in front of me. We're assuming, yeah, of course he's gonna stop for the stop sign he has right here. But did he, friends? No. He did stop and he body looked to the left. Um, and he was looking at the traffic that was coming. But he I'll was supposed to look at you. you. He was supposed to look at us. Well, yeah, of course you look forward. like. He only looked to the left? That's ridiculous. Yeah. If you're turning right, you can't just look at your traffic to the left. You are at a crosswalk. There is a literal crosswalk. There is the lines on the pavement for people to cross. Like you've got to, like, I don't drive. Shocking, I know, I never have. Well, I mean, I have, but you know what I mean, never legally. You know, he's like, looks left and then hits his gas to turn because I guess no cars were going and so he saw a break in the traffic for him to be able to turn onto the busy street. And I, at the point where he decided to hit his gas to turn, I was bang smack in the middle of his car. I was not like slightly off to the side. I was in the center. Like if, if this is me, this is one driver's seat, or this is the passenger seat and this is the driver's seat. I am in the center console, okay? I would be at the part of his car where that little logo is in the front. I am dead center of his car. There is zero excuse for not seeing me and my mom and my cane. I am the one who like gets hit because my mom is on the other side of me. So when he hits his gas, thank God he did not hit it very hard 
because if he did, I would have been under his car. Like if he hit the gas any harder than he did and or my mom was not with me, I would have been under his car and on the ground. Um, but thankfully, what happened was he hit the back of my hand that was holding my cane in front of me because of course that part of my body is like what's closest to his car because my arm is out as I'm swinging my cane back and forth. I don't know if that makes sense. But uh, he hits me, my cane goes flying. Woo! That's what happened to my cane. She just did, went, went into the street and uh, out in front of me, it like kind of like flung out in front of me. So it's now in the intersection. And my mom, at the time that he hit my hand and my cane went flying, she obviously saw, cause she's sighted, that he had not stopped or like had continued to drive forward after stopping and not paying attention. And so she like grabbed me, screamed and pulled me out of the way. And so now I am standing beside his car on the driver's side. He has stopped cause he obviously heard a huge kerplunk cause metal hit metal and my cane went flying. We, I stand there and I'm in shock and I'm just standing there and I'm staring like towards the driver's side window. And obviously I can't see in the car. I can't see how old this person is. I can't see if they're alone. I can't see the gender of this person. I don't know anything. So I'm just standing there and I, I have been hit by a car once before. Unfortunately, I feel like it is like something that happens to blind people. It's very unfortunate. I've been hit by a car once um, in the suburbs, in my old neighborhood. Um, I was walking down the sidewalk and an elderly man backed up out of his driveway and hit me. It was a very similar situation. Like in that situation, I had to, I had to smash on his car before he like rolled the window down and he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't see, I'm getting older. And I was like, I think this is your sign to stop driving. Like that's what happened in that situation. But in that situation, it's like at least slightly more understandable. It was dusk. So it was like dark out. I was wearing a black jacket. Um, he was backing out. Like there was a lot of other, and he was elderly. And maybe again, this was his sign that like you can't see enough anymore to keep driving, at least certainly not in the evenings. So like there's many elements to that one that I understand more. This one, I have no words. It was midday, two o'clock in the afternoon, bright sunny day. I'm wearing all white. I am glowing and I have a cane and I am standing in front of your car. Like there's literally zero excuse. So I'm just standing there staring at him. And finally I lean down and I find my cane on the ground and I pick it up. And my mom is also standing there staring at him. Again, we're on a quiet side street. So like, we're not as worried that like cars are gonna come, but also if they did, I think they'd understand that we just got hit and they wouldn't like beep at us. But you know, it's LA traffic, who knows? So he finally rolls down his window after like a good long while. And he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, you just hit me. And he was like, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking and I, I didn't see you. And this is why I'm proud of myself because keep in mind, I am in shock. Okay, wait, let me get my cane. Let me get my prop. So I'm very proud of this. So in the heat of the moment, what do I say back to, I didn't look, I didn't see you. I literally went like this with my cane and held it up in both hands. And I went, that's why I don't drive. You need to be looking when you're driving. Cane drop. I know, I know, clever. And he was just like, I know, I'm so sorry. And he just like, we just turned and, and walked away. I mean, like what else was there to do? I think like, you know, sure we could have gotten like his license and registration and all that stuff. But like, I wasn't injured. And so there was really no point. Like, what am I gonna do? That's when I started crying. Cause I was just like, again, like in shock. Like that, it had been a very tough morning getting a phone call that wasn't good news. And so I was like, just already hold, barely holding myself together. And as I said, I was hungry, I was hot, I was tired. And then this happened and I was just like, so I cried a little bit, let a few, shed a few tears. He did ding my cane handle. Cane handle? Yeah, that's right, cane handle. <laughs> um, you guys probably won't be able to see it, but like the top of the cane is like dinged up a little bit, which I'm kind of mad at because I kept this thing pristine. Anyways, so my mom then told me that he was about 27, 28 years old and that he did have a girlfriend or a female sitting in the passenger seat. So my assumption can only be that the person sitting in the passenger seat was 
looking down at their phone. And as my mom said, he looked left and did not look in front when he surged to go um, turn into the traffic. So it's incredible to me that two people, again, he's not like a young, I mean, sure, maybe he's a new driver, but he's not like the age of a typical new driver, right? Like, it's not like he's like, oh, 16, 17, he's just getting used to the road, did something stupid. It's not like he's elderly and maybe losing his vision. I mean, he literally was just being, what's the word I'm looking for? Like three. Negligent or like? Negligent. That's a good one. Like he just wasn't being a, a safe negative. driver. He wasn't being a safe driver. And that's the entire reason this happened. And I hope this was a wake up call for both him and his girlfriend or friend or whoever the female was in the car with him. Eyes on the road, be paying attention. Don't be chatting, don't be distracted. Don't be looking at your phone. Pay attention to the road, it's important. And at the end of the day, um, I'm glad in a way that there was somebody in the car with him who will never let him live this down, that he literally hit a blind girl with his car when she had the right of way crossing the street with her cane. That's that, there are, again, just like with the avalanche rock situation, there is many ways in which this could have been far more dangerous and far more life threatening. I mean, again, like people die getting hit by cars every single day. People die crossing the road every single day. And I'm so lucky that he did not surge into traffic faster than he did. And that my mom was also there to physically pull me out of the way quickly. Um, and so those are just two of my three crazy, almost near death, possibly life-threatening experiences that I've had in the last 10 days and the most recent one was last night, but this video is getting long. Shocker, Molly talks a lot. So I think what I'm gonna do is make a part two. I'm literally gonna film it right now. So I'm gonna look the exact same in the next thumbnail or like be wearing the same thing and whatever. I'm gonna just cut this video here with story one and two and story three is to come in my next video. So make sure you have your post notifications turned on so you are ready when it drops because girl, an explosion was involved. You can't make this stuff up. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, anyways, click here if you wanna hear that New York City story time about the um, stampede that I was in and click over here if you wanna hear about the time I had to call 911 fire department in the middle of the night at a friend's house. So fun being me. Bye.